Hey, good day. It's Matt Roush. And Mike Brennan. And you're watching the M Squared Tech Cast, MITechnews.tv, at podcastdetroit.com, and a whole bunch of other podcast outlets. Uh, welcome to the show today. We've got a good one for you. We're starting off with David Brophy, who is, um, I guess, could be called the godfather of uh, private equity and venture capital in Michigan. Um, one of my favorite stories about this is when I first got to Crane's Detroit business in 1990, uh, Mary Kramer asked me to do a list of venture capital firms in Michigan. And I told her at that point that the good thing about it was it wouldn't take up much room in the magazine uh, because there weren't very many at that point. Uh, things have improved markedly since then, uh, due in no insignificant part to our first guest, David Brophy. So David, welcome to the show. Thank you, Matt. Good to see you again. Quite a buildup there, by the way. Yeah. So I, I like that. Yes. Uh, and I've known David. I, in fact, uh, when I was at the Free Press in the 90s, I started covering your show. And um, so I watched it evolve over time. And of course, now with the pandemic, it's taken a whole new direction. You have to do it online. But this is actually the second year that you've done it online. You did it last year successfully with another group, uh, Midwest Venture, I believe it's called, or what's yeah, the name of the group? Invest Midwest from St. Louis. Great. Okay, group. yeah. So does that mean the footprint is a little wider than just the Great Lakes states now? Is it the Midwest or what? Oh, it's way wider because now, you know, literally, if we wanted to, we could uh, send our signal out, uh, you know, globally. And uh, with Michigan's 566,000 living alumni scattered all over the world, that's not as crazy an idea as you might think. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we obviously miss the, um, the, the personal touch and so on and so forth. Well, we actually were planning it with Invest Midwest before the pandemic, uh, because uh, you may remember, Mike, uh, this two offerings ago, I think I announced that we were changing the name from the Michigan Venture Capital uh, or Private Equity Conference, what am I talking about, Growth Capital Symposium, there's too many names, uh, to uh, Midwest Growth Capital Symposium, because we're, we're one patch of dirt out here in the Midwest, and what we need is uh, we need to learn to eat our own cooking. Uh, our institutional investors need to uh, learn to invest in local funds and local funds need to learn to invest in local companies if we're going to get anywhere. So this year uh, you have four categories you're zeroing in on. Why don't you uh, tell the audience what those categories are? Well, uh, historically it's been about 50-50 life science and uh, information technology. And I think this year we're going to see a great surge of life science uh, companies. I know in our in our commercialization course that we run, uh, that's been the predominance of companies this year. But uh, also medical devices uh, will be featured and uh, new this year, but perhaps a little late in doing it. We should have been doing it a long time ago. Uh, agriculture and food. Michigan is a, uh, to a large extent an agricultural state, lots of agriculture going on, a lot of ag tech being developed and um, and food, of course, uh, I'm involved with, with, the, with the group in the Netherlands that uh, has an ecosystem there turning entirely on food. And so food is a terrific area of growth globally as well as nationally. So those are the four. But, you know, we wouldn't turn down a great deal from, uh, from any other part of the business world. We're looking for deals that'll get done. Okay. Let me just also say that February 2nd is the application deadline, so about a week away. Uh, well, so it, that's like, one of the, one of the reasons I wanted to get you on the show, not, right? Never said, Mike, uh, it can be uh, honored in the breach. I mean, I'm not going to turn down anybody who, who doesn't, uh, who is good at uh, applies later than that. So. Ah, okay, got it. I, I wasn't sure if that was a hard and fast date or not. So it's uh, firmly cast in. in not indelible ink. Ah, got it. <laughs> Firmly written in pencil. pencil. Uh, but um, um, just wanted to ask you, what are some of the things that investors are looking for these days? Are there any tips that you might give? Well, the best uh, thing you can do is company. show up with traction that you've achieved. And traction can be defined as anything from I've got my product installed at a company who is trying it out for me to I've just uh, got the following number of dollars of sales. Because the biggest thing is 
not as we as people have said for a long time, uh, it's not the idea, it's the execution. And the execution typically comes from the quality of the management team. So when we talk about traction, uh, the first cousin of traction is the management team. Get yourself a rounded out team because hardly anybody is going to put down money on just a technology or a great patent or whatever. Um, what are you doing with it? What kind of a product are you, or service are you providing? Who wants it? Who has demonstrated that they want it? And it's more important for us in the Midwest to do that because uh, our local investors are more inclined to look for those qualities than they are to look for a raw technology. The West Coasters and East Coasters are more eager to uh, look at uh, tech only, so to speak, or tech early. But the whole idea here is to expand our, um, our scope and um, you know, get more shots on goal with more investors. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, and, and the, the thing is that, that caught my eye was you're looking for companies that are looking for at least a half a million dollars, which means they probably <coughs> have angel investors already involved if they're going to be, if you're looking at that level of yes. funding. Yeah, exactly. Because the, the angel community here has, has been strong for a long, long time. And there have been a lot of uh, old reliables who, who have been there in all parts of the state. It's not just Ann Arbor. People think it's only Ann Arbor or, or now Detroit. It's not limited to those communities. It's all over the place. Look at Grand Rapids, look at Kalamazoo, uh, look, at, uh, look at Marquette. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I'm doing is, uh, is a, a deep study of those small community uh, ecosystems uh, from which we can get uh, lots of good entrepreneurs you know, Michigan has a great tacit understanding of manufacturing. There are people in the state of Michigan, you know, who are accustomed to uh, making uh, a quarter panel for a Ford car, uh, stick a blueprint of a medical device uh, in front of them, they can probably make that. How do we unleash that talent? How do we get it broadened and applied? so that we're building the next growth industries, the tech-based growth industries of tomorrow. You've uh, also got a parallel track kind of for uh, university spinouts. So describe a little bit how that's grown over the years. Well, the last few years at Michigan, I'll just speak for Michigan uh, first and then others, but uh, the last uh, four or five years, six years maybe, uh, at Michigan has been a real bonanza. We've turned out through tech transfer uh, a large, large number of, um, of, of startup companies. And the startup that we're talking about results from uh, great um, technology support uh, through, let's say, National Institute of Health or whatever, uh, through projects that are won by our professors, and then the encouragement of those professors to turn it into a startup. For most of the history of the University of Michigan, uh, the roadblock of conflict of interest prevented us from uh, realizing the value of our, uh, of our research. And that's been pretty much uh, put in its place. It doesn't mean that we don't have concern for conflict of interest, but it doesn't get in the way of productive uh, creation of companies. And then when you look at the other uh, universities and we've been inviting them and they've been coming to the symposium, Mike can attest to this and maybe Matt, you too, uh, we've had half a dozen, six or seven, whatever universities show up. Even uh, even the well-known Ohio State University has attended, and uh, uh, that's for Mike's. Um, uh, we don't uh, typically mention that college on this program. I but go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I, I understand. <clears throat> but I, yeah, I would imagine you. Days too, so I, you know. I would. I was going to say I would uh, venture to guess you probably heard from schools like Wayne State, Michigan State, Western Michigan, uh, Michigan Tech. Right. We had, we had, I'll tell you, we, we have this commercialization class in the business school. We had 110 students in it last year. We had 20 companies in it, real companies. Hmm. And, uh, you know, two of the groups that joined the class were Michigan Tech and Western Michigan. And Wayne has always been in the class and they'd rather come to our class than I've offered to help them start their own, but they want to come to our class. So this is, um, particularly in a, in a, a tech-centered world, 
the universities have a great opportunity uh, to play in this game. And Michigan, I would say, is one of the leaders in it. In fact, we're, we're tied pretty much with Wisconsin year after year uh, as the best uh, public universities for uh, tech transfer. And we were second in the country to MIT for the number of startups turned out this year. Startups turned wow. out this year. That's pretty good company. I think so. So with the three minutes- <laughs> they're, they're, we... glad, they're glad to be joined with us. <laughs> yes, right. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they call them the Michigan of the East, I think. There you right? go. Yeah, that's, right, that's it. But the that's Michigan the way the we got to yeah. think, man. Come yeah. on. No? We've only got a couple of minutes left in this segment, but let me ask, go back, circle back around to ag and food products. Clearly, yeah. uh, well, typically the, the, the rankings are Michigan in the economy is autos, tourism, and ag. Well, obviously tourism has taken it nosedive this year. So ag is the number two economy or sector in the economy. And so is that one of the reasons that you decided to include them this year? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to, this, this is, look, this sounds like a cliche or something, but this is a program for the people, you know? It's supported by the people. There's no uh, gigantic uh, sponsor of this or anything like that. And, you know, my objective always has to been to get as many people in Michigan, whatever, from whatever background they come, to be involved in innovation in whatever field they're in. And uh, while we, we have a large uh, volume of agriculture being done, we also have tech people in our universities who are in a position to invent things that will improve technology, will, will improve technology as devoted to agriculture. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to catch. And we've had companies here for a long time that have been involved in the science of agriculture, companies like Neogen and Lansing with uh, animal testing products and you know other things to detect contaminants in food and that kind of thing. So I that's, know Neogen very well. Yeah, yeah that's, that's part of the technology of the ag business. So. Yeah. So, so we want to put the spurs to that, Matt, get more, more of our students and everything. And it's amazing. I mean, I mentioned this thing in Holland and uh, those people have got it organized to the nines. And uh, we have a lot to learn by looking at other countries and other parts of the world and so on and so forth, you know, so. If you need anyone to go to Holland and spend time in Amsterdam and check it out, just just let me know. Okay, I was going to send you to Holland. I was going to send you to Holland, Michigan, Mike. Oh, the Holland, the, Michigan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, in the Flowers. summertime, sure. Why not? Yeah. The flowers absolutely. are just as pretty there. So. Yeah. Okay. All so, right. Great. Well, we got about a minute left, so why don't you tell people how they can uh, apply to your program this year? Well, we're sending out uh, applications. I think you. I I don't know if you have what. Maybe you have a copy there, or maybe they can get it through your service. I don't know. Nope, but uh, applications are out, and uh, just to fill it out, whether you want to attend, whether you're an investor, whether you're a company that uh, wants to uh, compete to pitch in this thing uh, this year, uh, we'll probably have 100 companies in it between uh, uh, Invest Midwest from St. Louis and ourselves. And... Um, um, we, we've posted the uh, um, website and uh, press release and so on. So most of the um, places that, uh, norm from, that normally feed us with uh, prospects have, have seen it. But um, I'm putting uh, this material out to all our past attendees. So it's going to be pretty hard to miss uh, an application for admission. Okay. So I want to just thank you, Mike, for everything you've done, because I well remember uh, your work at the Free Press, and, and I think your attendance record is exceeded only by that of my wife, Linda, who's uh, <laughs> attended every one. But uh, you're, you've now done a great thing, you and Matt. You, you brought uh, an online TV uh, piece of medium to this whole idea of technological entrepreneurship and uh, I, I really congratulate you for it. And I hope that you can continue. If I can be of any help, let me know. All uh, right. Well, thank you. I didn't quite expect that because we have this little rivalry thing with the school thing, but we'll, we'll let that go for no, now. No, thank no, you. no, no, no. Thank no, you there, very much, there, David. Yes. Yeah, so. There's deep love behind every bit of rivalry, Mike. You know that. So okay. and you're, Irish, you're an Irishman too. So what can I say? There you go. All right. All right. Okay. Take care, Matt. All right. Well, thanks very much, David Brophy from the University of Michigan, talking about the Midwest Growth Capital Symposium. Traditional we'll four-year students love Lawrence Technological University's thriving campus life. 
but LTU has always met non-traditional students' needs too. Lawrence Tech offers over 100 degree and certificate programs that can get adult students started or back on track. And most of our classes are conveniently offered evenings at our beautiful Southfield campus or online so you can balance your social, family, and work life even while you power up your career. Lawrence Tech, where blue devils dare.